Now to part two of our conversation with Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. As he begins his second year in office, we met for a wide-ranging conversation at Harlem Tavern in the neighborhood he's lived in most his life. After a rocky start last January, he ended the year with a win in the Trump Organization tax fraud case. He's reportedly not stopping there with Trump, and he had some pointed words for those who underestimate him. You were successful with the Trump prosecution, shall we say. Um, but you didn't feel like the law goes far enough. $1.6 million for a violation of that nature. What would be appropriate? We need a statute that is elastic, that, that will allow for when you have something like this, a systemic uh, decades plus fraud to have fines that are not just something that can be priced in by, you know, a, a multi-million dollar corporation. And you said you're going to move on to the next chapter when it comes to the Trump Organization. Still outstanding, the Stormy Daniels case, right? The value of his assets. Says he's a victim of a witch hunt. His attorneys say you don't understand the tax laws in this last case, the, hinting at maybe you don't know what you're doing. Should he be held accountable? So first, the, 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 the jury uh, has so held uh, and the, the judge has done the sentencing. So I think that speaks for itself uh, and is a reflection of the professionalism and rigor of the trial team. We follow the facts. We follow the facts in the law. Uh, and as I've said, you know, when we conclude, uh, we will speak either through an indictment or I will give a public statement uh, explaining our thoughts. You started an initiative recently on homelessness in the city. You put $9 million that you seized in various cases um, to, to augment homeless programs. Some would say that's out of the purview of the DA, but you say no. Why? We wanted to invest and provide resources for people to be able to connect, uh, help those in mental health distress, which doesn't necessarily mean that our crime was going to happen, but certainly helps the sort of order and stability of a neighborhood. The plan, though, is to sort of match people up with services as they're arrested, as they're arraigned, at what, at what point in the process? So right after arraignment, having the connection and the services made right there, if we can address the underlying issue, we won't have what I call the churn, or the person going in for two weeks and coming right back to your neighborhood, right back to your corner, and doing the same thing. That cycle of recidivism is what this funding is addressed. Your dad ran homeless shelters? Where? Uh, right, he worked for the New York City, worked for HRA. He ran homeless shelters throughout the borough of Manhattan, uh, in Midtown, and uh, up in Washington Heights, and out in Queens. And what kind of impact did that have on other young Alvin Bratt? And on my dad's work, particularly Jermaine now, uh, for what we see sort of our, our, our challenges with mental health and our unhoused population. And when we did our, our $9 million commitment late last year, I very much had sort of him in mind in terms of sort of the, the humanity and trying to reach out to people in distress and form connections like he did. I mean, I could see uh, the impact he had on people's lives. Just one more thing, you're a Knicks fan. Should they be held in contempt for not winning for 50 years? <laughs> oh. I'm a fan, too. They, they, it's been killing me. It's been, it's been hard. It's been hard. So glass half full, cautious optimists next year. Right. The owner, Jim Dolan, is banning people from the garden who disagree or who are in litigation with him. Should he be accountable for that kind of thing? I, I can't comment on that. But they do need to win. I can certainly comment on that. Wins would be great. <laughs> State Attorney General Tish James just announced she is looking into the James Dolan case. We will certainly follow that one for you. And you can see parts one and two of our conversation with DA Alvin Bragg on our website. Just go to CBSNewYork.com. By the way, he's only the fourth Manhattan DA in like 80 years. Right. He says he's planning to run for re-election in 2025. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep an eye on him and uh, get some more updates. So he didn't mention anything beyond that? No, no, no. no. Well, one term at a time. <laughs> one year at a time, actually, as it goes. And forever a Knicks fan, right? No doubt. Okay. No doubt. I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next year, as he said. Always. It's always next year. Always next year. Yeah. All right.